Okay. So I'm a, my, I'm Jane and I'm a mental health nurse and I've been a mental health nurse for 35 years now. And uh, at the start of this year, I was a lecturer at university, uh, teaching nurses and um, social workers and whatever. Um, and as a result of COVID and in this country, the, the um, government put out the request for nurses to go back on the floor. I went back into practicing mental health. Um, and so I now work um, with GP surgeries and all mental health stuff is coming to me because as we all predicted, it's like a tsunami out there. It's a bit relentless at the moment. And there's a lot of um, uh, the, the increase in mental health needs and people's mental well-being being a bit negative. It is quite substantial. So my presentation or what I'm going to talk about today is mental health mindfulness and how I um, use creativity. And it came from um, it's quite nice actually coming uh, after Catherine, wasn't it, who was just on, because what I um, what I noticed was that there was this massive gap for 18 to sort of 25, 26 year olds who uh, wanted to be more resilient. They were like, they were very anxious having panic attacks, but they didn't want medication. And they were saying, I want to try and find something different. And, and it was constant, I was getting it constantly. And so I, I just through talking, just with the half hour chat that we had, I started experimenting with, with like a, a, what I thought was like a Cinderella shoe thing, because not everything fits everybody. So just through the conversation of where they were at, what was going on, trying to find something that they could use. Um, so I'll, I'll just see if I can get the, um, share what I've got. I might not be able to, because I'm rubbish at this sort of thing, uh, if I'm honest. No problem. If you can see the green button saying share. Screen. Yeah, I just need to get my keynotes. Oh, Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just need to, to get my, um, see if I can copy it and then I can, should be able to share it. Is that shared? Uh, yes, it's working. Perfect. Oh, perfect. Okay. So as I've said, I'm going to just look at mental health, mindfulness and creativity. Sorry. <laughs> ah. Come on, come on, come on. Right, here we go. So, so this year um, has been a, a very strange year and there's been a massive impact on mental health, as I said. One of the things that was quite substantial was that the majority of the people that I was speaking to were suffering with anxiety and, oh, it's disappeared. <laughs> I'll take it off because it disappears. Um, were suffering from anxiety and panic attacks. And though this year with its very unprecedented, you know, pandemic. Um, for some, it was quite positive, but for others, there was this negative side. And I like creativity. And I've been doing some stuff with my neighbors before I um, went back to mental health and just helping them because our gardens sort of interlinked, doing breathing and, um, other bits and pieces and it was through that it sort of developed and the biggest question that was being asked of me constantly day by day more than once um you know I started off seeing about five people a day and and just before Christmas before I took some time out um I was seeing 15 people a day that's how much it's increased mental well-being and the biggest question everyone asked is, why is this happening to me? If I could just find out why this is happening to me, then I would be able to do something about it. So I, I just started talking to people about the stress response. And I just broke it down into something very simple so people could understand. This is not something that you are controlling. This is something your body is doing, but what your body is doing, you can control. You can put some things in place. So I sort of spoke a little bit about how the mind has a certain place in it, 
which is like your neighborhood watch. So the, you know, um, I don't go into the, the, the big words. And that, that little part of the brain um, is vigilant constantly. And that constant vigilance is, is looking for fear, looking for things that threaten existence, our, and is taking us right back to our um, survival instinct. And then I brought into play, um, you know, the, the, how that then affects the body. So when you, you know, when fear is generated, we, this, this um, uh, neighborhood watch part of the brain, when it picks up or fears something, it then does something to the body. So I explained that the chemicals, the cortis, you know, cortisol, the adrenaline, go through the body and they, change what happens to your body so I'd then say the reason your heart is pounding is because you know it needs to take your blood around your body to prepare you to either run or fight your um what is you're frightened of I said and, and years ago it would have been maybe a saber-toothed tiger but our saber-toothed tigers now are not as visible so it's that idea that what happens is we have something that the part of the brain that is vigilant for fear, but for, for all, you know, the things that frighten us um, and that may um, mean that we become extinct. So we have to try and, and get through it. Um, you know, once, um, once we've got that going, we, we have one, the chemicals flood through our bodies create our heart pounding, create our breathing, shallow breathing, cut out our digestive system. Because as I say to people, you know, you're faced with a saber tooth tiger, you don't need to be saying, oh, I better have a sandwich first. So it kind of stops that, you know, um, fertility stops because again, you don't need to be thinking about that. Your, your mind becomes very focused, which is why managing the anxiety and the panic becomes very difficult because you are your body and your mind are preparing for that fight or that flight and once people understood that that seemed to be the first barrier and so it got me thinking about you know um trying to translate it into this style that that was more accessible to anyone really but specifically for the 18 to 25 year olds um, but it is transferable and then once we'd worked that out once we'd done that it was then stuff you know that that could then be put in what we called a tool bag a bag things that would be useful um, that were easy to grasp easy to grab hold of and you could take anywhere so the first thing that I introduce people to is a mindful moment, which we've already done some today and we've had some very um, lovely uh, meditations, which have been wonderful. So thank you, everyone. Um, and the one that I found has been the most useful. If you would like to join me, um, we can have a quick practice now. So if you uh, would like to, if you just get yourself comfortable, sitting down if you'd like to close your eyes feel free to if not just soften your gaze and just gently feel your feet on the floor your bottom on the seat wherever you are if you're lying down just notice your body for a moment just so that you get the intention for the practice and then breathe in through your nose so breathe in slow and deep starting at your nose Breathing in all the way down, imagining the breath going down to the body, all the way down to the toes. And once your breath is at your toes, slowly and steadily breathe out through your mouth. Now repeat again by breathing in through your nose, slow and steady as deep as you can make it, there's no right or wrong. Feel your body, imagine your breath all the way through your body, down to your toes. And when it reaches your toes, slowly breathe out. 
to your mouth. Now gently bring your breathing back to its normal pattern. So stop trying to force your breath. Don't try and make it anything different than what it is. Just bring your attention to the rhythm of your own breathing. And gently start to count down from 10. So breathe in, breathe out 10. Breathe in, breathe out 9. Breathe in, breathe out 8. Breathe in, breathe out 7. Breathe in, breathe out 6. Breathe in, breathe out five. Breathe in, breathe out four. Breathe in, breathe out three. Breathe in, breathe out two. Breathe in, breathe out one. Back to 10. Breathe in, breathe out 10. Breathe in, breathe out nine. Breathe in, breathe out eight. Breathe in, breathe out seven. Breathe in, breathe out six. Breathe in, breathe out five. Breathe in, breathe out four. Breathe in, breathe out three. Breathe in, breathe out two. Breathe in, breathe out one. And again, back to 10. Breathe in, breathe out 10. Breathe in, breathe out nine. Breathe in, Breathe out eight. Breathe in, breathe out seven. Breathe in, breathe out six. Breathe in, breathe out five. Breathe in, breathe out four. Breathe in, breathe out three. Breathe in, breathe out two. Breathe in, breathe out one. And just check in with yourself after that roughly one moment's breathing. And from that, I would then have a conversation with people about checking in. So check in how you feel right now in this present moment. And then you can make a conscious decision, a choice about what action you now take. Because what you've done and what I explained to them is that you've because you're you aren't getting to the point where you fight the saber toothed tiger, and then you aren't taking that oh, breath once you've either fought it or run and you're safe. What you're doing is you're putting that breath oh, into play consciously for one moment's pause. So you're pressing the pause button on your life. And that in itself starts to release the chemicals that neutralize the stress chemicals. And that was fine for some people. But for other people, because of this whole fear that's going on, we're constantly being fed through social media, through the TV, all the statistics, everything in relation to COVID, constant, 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 change, change, change. For some people, the anxiety was just too high. So I started then bringing into play other things. So I'd ask them what their hobbies were and what they enjoyed. And from that, different people wanted different things or liked different things. So I started suggesting to people that they get a bag a bag, just any old bag, like this. This is mine, my crazy knitting lady bag, yay. And in that bag, they can put something that, that gives them the same pause with the counting or whatever it is that just distracts their mind for that moment. So for some people, it was crocheting. And so I got them crocheting these -da 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 -da. squares so we crochet squares and it's it's counting 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 and from that pause they got the same um distraction that same ability that same moment where they could check in 
and kind of go, ah, oh, and then they might be able to engage with the breathing. Um, for some, it took a bit longer. But also the creativity gave people something really positive about that moment. So they could do things like make a hat. So it turned their, um, their, their anxiety, that, that panic, once we'd worked out how, what it was all about and they could notice the signs and symptoms, they could put something in place and then they had something positive at the end of it. And that detachment from everything that was going on and that creation, something they created at the end of it, so they would just do it and do it and do it until they, they um, um, were able to produce something, then they could, they could make things. So this is another thing people were making out of their squares, flowers. Um, and, and, you know, there were, there were many other things. I've got people who send me stuff now. So, you know, things like Christmas decorations. Um, we, have, we have bags which we put musical instruments in. So these are drumsticks. These are quite cool, actually. Uh, so for people who like music, because that lovely gentleman earlier with the, uh, I'm not good with names, he, he was talking about how music was his chosen one. So these ones, these are just, you just hit something and you have a beat. So if people like to meditate or like music as a distraction, as a way of creating, this was something they could do. Beat to, you know, with the music, count the beats. Um, for others, it was mindful colouring. So we got the mindful coloring books. Um, I, I helped people learn how to, or showed them how to scrapbook. This is my scrapbook from 30 years ago when my daughter was born. And it's the one I keep, but she can have it one day, but she has got other ones. And it's just putting happy things, what you're grateful for, day-to-day uh, -day stuff, photographs, and you can look at it. So that can go in a bag. Um, lots of people have already mentioned it, journaling. So I, help, I was helping people with journaling. Um, and, and, and it was about what is it that you enjoy? What is it that you like to do? And how can we turn it into something bite-sized so that when you notice your panic is starting, you can pick it up and you can take out what's in there and you can distract yourself, you can, you can do something if you can't focus on the breathing, if you feel that's too difficult. Because a lot of people found trying to breathe with, their, uh, with, with the shallow breaths really hard to start off with because it was too frightening. So it was a way of slowly taking them into it by using a whole range of creative ideas. And this is, just something I'll share. This is from a, an 18 year old um, that I worked with in April and she loved art. So she put together, she sent me this. So apologies, it's back to front. It says, thank you. But this is her artwork. So that was what she created or one of the things. And she wrote me a lot. I won't read what's in there, but she wrote me a lovely card. Um, you know, and, and you know, it's it it just says thank you because you've changed my you know my way of managing things and I feel hopeful for the future which goes in line with what was said half an hour earlier because you know she believed that that the anxiety wasn't going to rule her life and that that was such an achievement for for an 18 year old um it was really lovely and lastly just so that we can have a a, a if anyone wants to ask questions about um how we how we use these because I call them panic bags not because I wanted to but that's the name everybody liked I kept saying other things like calm bags and that but they were going no I want it as a panic bag because I want to know that when I panic I pick up the bag that says panic and I'm like okay then and this is a, a, from somebody who um, became very close to me during covid so I'll read this to you uh, because, again, this was something I worked with uh, somebody who had a lot of anxiety, um, uh, a, a neighbour of mine. And she put, Jane, while COVID ran wild in 2020, we celebrated Aries. Our healing powers intensified. We became more calm in mind, body and spirit. We genuinely counted our blessings. Our friendship grew stronger. 
our spirituality found new depths and we found a deeper inner peace, all in our bubble. So they're just things, oh, and, and I may as well show you, this is, this is a bit extreme, but hey ho, I liked it so much, I had it tattooed on my arm. <laughs> so my apologies to you all. <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, so it just showed how much um, creativity can help people because most people think they can't do it and it's just tapping in to the creativity that they have that they're okay to explore and practice you know it's about the process it's teaching people it's not really the outcome that we can create from the outcome it's that process of creating and and what we can learn from it if other people don't like our art fair enough it doesn't really matter So I open the floor. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Jane. Wow. So, so much uh, real experience with, uh, with young people and what they find helpful. So yeah, any <laughs> questions? Does anybody have any questions, comments? Um, everyone's very appreciative here. Can exercise be a distraction? asking Stephanie. Yes. Here's another one of my bags here. This is yeah. another one of my panic bags yeah. and in it, I have two dice. There you go. So you chuck the dice on the floor and it tells you what to do. 30 reps squats. Yeah. 60 seconds of jumping jacks. Oh, so the time and the action. What are the six options there are that, that you've got on there? Uh, you've got jumping jacks, squats, push-ups, crunches, um, walking lunges, uh, 60 oh. seconds, 30 seconds, 90 seconds, 30 reps, 20 reps, 10 reps. Wow, where do you find stuff like that? Ah, uh, I just, I'm just like that. I'm just, I'd like actually to make this into a mindfulness set, if I'm honest. This okay. is what I'd really love to do, is, yeah. is to have it so you have the two. So yes, exercise can be used. Um, it's very, very good. Dancing is absolutely brilliant. Um, once people get over the, um, the, the, the fact that, that we have all these conditioned things that mean we don't try because we're frightened of failure and that failure becomes a fear which adds to our panic. Uh, Ziggy's saying that I love drawing geometrical shapes. I find it so relaxing. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. That's what we do with the mindful, um, the mindful uh, drawing. Sometimes we get them to create their own um, geometric patterns that they can then colour in if they want to. It's yeah. it's really useful, Ju even if it's just for that one minute, just something that just stops whatever is going on in that person's head, the thoughts, the ruminations, the negative chatter, all of those things. It's just putting that pause in. Stop it. Do something else. Focus on something else. You know, if you can, the breathing. Yes, that's, you know, a great option. But, you know, you can use crochet, knitting, cross stitch, exercise, whatever, to wow. encourage that, to actually do it. So, you know, you're crocheting, you're crocheting stitches, you're counting. I've got to do three stitches and then I've got to do, you know, two trebles or whatever, whatever. So it, it's the same process. It has exactly the same um, outcome. It just allows some of those chemicals to start neutralizing the other chemicals in the body. Wow. Alcatel 1C says daily creative practices is in my toolkit for managing rapid cycling bipolar. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it is. It's, it's a great, we, you know, it, it is a great, great, great tool, um, yeah. creativity. And we, we, we're a bit bound. It's about moving. Um, it's about having flexible um, edges to the boxes that we, we find that nowadays everything has a label and everything we're put in boxes or everything's put in a box and this is how it's done. Dance is done like this, you know, art is like this. And it's about being flexible around those and saying, it doesn't have to be, mm. it can be whatever I want it to be. You know, I can write rabble, loads of rubbish in a book, mm. loads of words. And there might be one sentence out of it where I go, whoa, that's a great sentence. But that's how Bob Dylan wrote his songs, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, the, the, it's about, you know, we, we, it's about the constraints. And this year has, has really had loads of constraints. And that set off a chain reaction. Mm. 
-hmm. And then it's like, I can't do that because I can't, I can't, I can't. Lots of things were taken away from people. Their coping strategies that they used before, like the gym, you know, uh, going to a silent disco or whatever it was, um, going to see friends. Those coping strategies were taken away and and it was all made smaller and quite rigid, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of the most powerful coping strategies were were taken away. Mm. Ella says something really nice here. She said, as an 18-year-old who has had many adverse CAMS experience, C-A-M-H-S, is that how you say it, CAMS? Yeah, CAMS, yeah, yeah, yeah. Says that you're a gem. These young people are lucky to have you. So she can really... (laughs) So they say, so they say. (laughs) My daughter actually said to me uh, last week, I didn't appreciate how you brought me up, Mum, until I became an adult and had children of my own. Now I realise how resilient I am. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wow. Yeah. I, was a, I was a troublesome teenage. I was a troublesome child. Yeah. I had a lot of problems um, due, due to many things. I, I, I don't want to go into them, but I was very labelled as a child as difficult, challenging. I struggled at school, not academically, but people didn't get me. And, and as a result, that label took me down some very dark and awful places um, because that's where your negative talk comes from. It's a lot to do with other people. And, and, and it, you know, it, from that experience, and, and I, I do remember it, I, I just kept thinking there's got to be more and, and hence why I became a mental health nurse, nurse no doubt. Mm. um lots of free therapy (laughs) but I realized even then there was a gap because you know it it it, nobody looked into what was going on in my life nobody looked into any of those things they didn't they didn't sort of see the person they just saw the behavior you know and I've always been very clear when I fostered children and everything I'd say to everyone please see the child not the behavior the behavior is just a form of communication and they don't have the words to to express it so we need to find something something that helps them to express their what it is they're saying where they don't have to rely on something that they've learned and that's how they've done it in the past and that's where the creativeness comes in you you know children are great to learn from um the the doctor again i'm really rubbish with names when he was talking early Doty. yes that's it yeah you know he he was right when he said the gurus around us are are the 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 kids you know and how they are mindful and how they engage with all with all these things you know Mm -hmm. and and if we look at that we lose so much of it because as adults we start thinking we can't do that why can't you dance around your living room if you want to put your favorite song on, if you're if you're feeling that your your heart is starting to be, oh, I can feel myself panicking. Why not just put your favorite song on and sing and dance? Way, you know, why not? Yeah, 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 exactly. Wow. Yeah, wow. you know, why not just sit on the floor and get your hands covered in paint? And you know, why not? It doesn't matter. I mean, here I show you. This is this. Okay, this is this is my one of my COVID artworks. Oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> and I wanted to know what would happen if I put a load of paint on some canvas and got a um, a food mixer out. There you go. <laughs> really? So that's a food mixer. Ooh. Wow. <laughs> that's probably worth millions in the future. It's modern art. It could be, you but the, it's not the outcome. I don't care what people think of it. It was the process. It was that whole thing where I was like, you know, oh, and I was having a bit of a, you know, we've, we've all had our ups and downs during COVID. Of course. Um, and I just thought, what can I do? And someone had given me this old mixer and said, can you do something with it? And I was like, oh, and it was sitting in the boot of my car. And I thought, oh, I've got that mixer in the boot of the car. So I just, I just thought, why not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a great why not? And it, I, think and quite, that, I think what you've shared is given permission, because I think that's what people need, permission. And they realise yeah, the yeah. power of it and the permission to be, silly and a bit crazy and creative and use yeah. that as an outlet to 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 work through these these really difficult emotions when they come up yeah 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 Not i mean like i've got just having to do like this look i these are what i put in my in the bags for people look this is this is a piano Whoa. it's a folding up piano it's so cool look does it work yeah sure it does look see wow oh my god and, and it's such a thing existed yeah, the, the way I look at it is it, it it's not for anyone. You're not doing it 
to get permission from anybody. You're not doing any of those things. You're just saying, I can create, I can do this. And from this experiment, I'll get something from it. And then that will take me to the next experiment and the next yeah. experiment. I'm curious. I, you know, it, it, yeah. it it's it. sort of get rid of all of that stuff and just go for it. I love it. Don't be frightened because that creative side of the brain is so good to balance the other side where we get a bit, we overthink and, mm-hmm. and we get on this train of thought and we're off on a journey we never even intended to be on. And, and we're, we're so far along it before we even register it. It's yeah. being able to have something that, that says, stop. Ah, I'm at a station. Ooh, I can get off. You know, I don't have to stay on this train. I have a bag. I have something here that when I feel that, I just pick it up and I take out what's inside and I just give it a go. And who cares? So long as I get that calm moment. Absolutely. I love mm. it. I'm just going to read a couple of comments and we better finish because we've gone slightly. Oh, yes. Sorry. <laughs> Ella said, uh, Ella says, such a truth about creativity, too. We need to uh, be good by someone else's standards, but actually we can create for ourselves. Christine mm. says that piece of artwork you did is better than some artwork in the Museum of Modern Art. So. <laughs> Your food mixes out, people. <laughs> Gloria, Gloria, hi, Gloria. She says, "Curiosity is my word. It's what keeps me moving on. It's what makes me the resilient person I am." Mm. Um, and Melissa says, "I am listening to myself, not being busy with online drama." <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> online drama to help me focus. Well. Great, great. Thanks so much for your You're time on New Year's Eve. Very much. No, thank you for, for your listening. amazing work. I will send you the the PowerPoint, the the things. Yeah. Sh- with it. Just... Yeah, yeah. If you send it to me, I can share the link with yeah. everyone. And, and if uh, anyone's interested in anything, then I, I don't do any. I'm not really social media or anything like that. I kind of came off it all some years ago in yeah. like big time because I just find it too intrusive. Yeah. However, I'm, I'm there's only me with my name, so people can just type me into Google and you'll find me. PM me, just personal message me off Facebook, and I'm happy yeah. to chat with people if they want to. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Perfect. Thank Thank you so much, Jane. Have a a lovely... Bye-bye. Thank you, everybody.